Thanks for tuning in to podcast number 40. Once again, I will take a little bit of time here in the beginning to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank everybody for writing in. Thank you for reviewing. Thank you for donating and uh, helping spread the word of, uh, of, these, of the podcast series. The whole idea with these podcasts, why am I doing them, right, is, is, is so we can build this consensus of essentially what is right and wrong in our sport. And, and that's why I started these. Um, and it, it kind of goes back to my core message, right, which is I, I want to bring the techniques and habits of the best riders in the world to every rider in the world. And that is on and off the bike. So that's why I'm doing them. I thank everybody for uh, for listening and, and, and uh, keeping them going. And can you believe it? We're at podcast number 40. Ha! Huh. And they said it wouldn't last. So... Let's just uh, let's just jump right into this one, and and this topic comes off of um, uh, the request list, which is rear brake. Let, let's just let's just dive into rear brake and, and let's get the rear brake going and, and figure it out a little bit. So some general things on rear brake. I have riders at a very high level that they absolutely use the brake rear brake literally every entry. I have other riders, same essential pace, same level of rider. They never touch the rear brake. So there's a lot of different thought processes on rear brake. And what, what rear brake does, I will explain the, the, the actual specific things that it does, but, but overall for different riders, it's a comfort thing, right? I mean, we can look at a rider like Scott Russell. Scott Russell is on the rear brake all the time. Um, it's something that it's a comfort thing for him, right? Where he feels how he wants to get the bike to work. And he needs that feel of the rear brake. We have other riders, JD Beach as well. JD uses a lot of rear brake. Um, it's fantastic, right? Then we have other riders, Jake Lewis never touches the rear brake. So we have all these different, all these different levels of riders, or in this case, very, very high level riders. Some do, some don't. So it really ends up being a comfort level and getting the res- get, using the tools to get the result that they want from the motorcycle. So let's let's get into some of the specifics of it as well. So what's the rear brake do, right? What, I mean, I know that sounds that sounds simply. Let's let's start let's start really simple. What does the rear brake do? It slows you down, right? That's the number one thing. Is it slows you down? It's a brake. It's but but it's also let's realize it's to complement the front brake. It's not to overpower the front brake. It's not to overshadow the front brake. It's a it's to complement the front brake. If the motorcycle was designed to use primarily rear brake, if that's how you would do it, then the rear brake would be bigger or we would have double disc on, on the rear of the rear wheel. We don't. Most times, especially on modern sport bikes, the, the rear brake is going to be a little bit small. Um, and um, it's again, to complement the front brake. When we get in some of the street bikes, some of the bigger cruisers, adventure bikes, things like that, the rear brake gets bigger, bikes are heavier for one, too, especially on the cruiser cruiser segment, because the front end of the bike is a lot more raked out. Um, the, the braking percentage, you know, front to rear changes a little bit, but the front brake is still going to be um, more powerful than the rear, and it's gonna it, it's going to um, allow the bike to stop quicker. So the first thing with the rear brake, it slows you down. It's that simple. Second thing, it's there to complement the front brake. It's there to complement it, not overshadow it. And the way that the rear brake works is, if you look at the rear brake, it's attached to the swing arm, right? It's, 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 it, or it's, you know, it's, it's fixed. It's, it's, it's fixed uh, on, the, on the swing arm. And what happens is when you go to the rear brake, right, you've got the, the disc is spinning. Well, it's trying to obviously slow that disc down. So what it does is it actually compresses the rear of the bike slightly. If you ever watched a, um, a bike on a dyno and the dyno operator operates the rear brake, you'll see the rear of the bike squat down. Well, how that works when you go to use the the rear brake is if you go to the rear brake slightly, a millisecond before you go to the front brake, that's what helps the weight transfer. It helps, that's what they say, oh, I use the rear brake to help settle the bike. That's why. So rear brake helps settle the front of the bike and we'll use it right before we go to the front brake because that's really what the the big purpose is. Motocross riders, dirt track riders, a lot of times they'll use rear brake because they're using the rear brake to help try to get the bike to have direction, try to back the thing in. 
Um, the, I have some thoughts on that that I'll share here um, in a little bit at the end, uh, at the end of this. So rear brake slows you down, complements the front brake, squats the rear suspension slightly as you go to it to help settle the front end. And one thing I want you to think about with the rear brake, if you're going to use it, and we'll, we'll talk about, we'll talk about um, if you should, and how, how would you even uh, um, look at what kind of corners you'd use the rear brake on, is if it's not as powerful as the front brake, one thing I want you to think about, and this is something that uh, 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 Nick, Nick Ionach and I, we've talked a lot about, and this is what Nick would say. He goes, well, if you don't have, if you don't have brake power, what do you have? What do you have to do then? Well, you have to have brake distance. So rear brake, if you just, if you just use rear brake and not didn't use the front brake, you'd have to start your braking procedure much, much earlier. So that's why we use the front brake more than the rear brake, of course, because the front brake's way more powerful. So you can use the rear brake and actually you can you can use it as a very precise tool to complement the front. So here's how we would start, here's how we would start to um, use it. Is one, I would use it on two uprides. And when I'd use it on two uprides, so right before I go to the rear brake, I would or front brake, I'd go to a little bit of rear brake to stop the weight transfer so much so my passenger wouldn't be so cramped up on me, especially at a higher track pace. I would use the rear brake in situations where I didn't want to load the front end up as much as I normally would. So downhill braking section, for instance, you can look at, um, oh, Road America, Road America Turn 5, for example. You can look at um, um, in Sears or Sonoma Raceway now, that's right, even though I still think of it as Sears Point, uh, Turn 4, downhill, downhill uh, right-hand corner but very, very steep, help take a little bit of load off the, the, front of the front of the bike where it won't pitch as much. So you're using it in corners where it doesn't load the front as much. And that will help take some of the load off the bike as well. Load off the front of the bike as well. The other things that it can do is in corners where you want to tighten up your radius, but not put more load on the front, fantastic tool to do that. Again, going back to Sonoma Raceway is uh, the carousel downhill left-hand corner. You're leaned over. You got a lot of lean angle, but but you need the bike to have a little bit of direction change two-thirds of the way through. A little bit of rear brake will suck the bike right into the apex, and it doesn't take much. It's shocking how little it takes. So another great way, another nice little tool to make that happen. Even at some of the other tracks that we've been visiting lately, Chuckwalla turn four to five. A little bit of rear brake right in there will also help suck the front end uh, front end end. So you can use it as that type of precision tool uh, as well um, to help get the bike do what you want it to do. So on entries, we're talking about the entries, help settle the bike on the entry. It will, um, if you have another extra disc there, you probably can shorten up your braking distance um, a little bit as well, but it takes a very concentrated effort to make that happen. And then on the exits, we see some people using rear brake on exits as well. And we'll see people using rear brake on exits, one, to help keep the bike from wheeling so much. And so you'll use uh, rear brake against the throttle, pause, on exits, because you're trying to keep the bike settled, you're trying to keep the front end of the bike down. So I've seen it a lot of times where people, riders, um, will use rear brake against the throttle to help keep the bike um, from wheeling. And yeah, there's definitely some throttle and uh, throttle and brake, uh, or rear brake overlap on that one. So that's how we'll see it on exits. We also see it in some ways as a traction control device. If your bike doesn't have TC uh, with low grip, you definitely can um, you definitely can use a little bit of rear brake against the throttle. Because what did I say it did? It squatted the rear a little bit, so it puts a little bit more weight into the rear of the bike, a little more weight on the tire, help thing uh, keep the thing from spinning. Scott Russell talked a lot about that back in the day where they used a lot of rear brake uh, on, on, uh, in the rain because they didn't have traction control. So he'd be literally standing on the rear brake trying to get the throttle opened up so the thing wouldn't spin. So some ideas there as well. I also will use rear brake to find out what my grip is like. Um, even though I'm not a big rear brake user, there's turns I will use it, I'm very not that many, um, but I will use the rear brake in some corners. I still find it every day that I ride. 
So when I do my initial habits of going out on the track and getting brake feel for the front, I also go to the rear brake and start to mess with that a little bit. And we'll talk about how you can do that as well. So that rear brake, finding it and, and how you load it, of course, uh, becomes um, a, a, a very big deal when it goes against that. So on the street, I, I want street riding. I actually use the rear brake quite a bit. Um, mainly it's because I always want to give myself a little bit of insurance policy on front grip of how much front grip that I need. So again, I'm thinking I'm trying to see things very early on the street. I can use a little bit of rear brake. Um, it's just not as powerful as the front, and I can play around with that a little bit more and uh, control my speed uh, by using rear brake. So I use a little bit more rear brake uh, on the, um, on the street for sure, rather than the track. Um, I use it. I use it a lot. So on the streets, absolutely use it. Cruisers, we use it a lot as well, just because of the weight transfer of the bikes. And at the track, we use it, but again, don't let it overshadow the front brake right? The front brake's got the capability. Use it to complement the front brake. So I started to give you some ideas of when you'd be using the rear brake, which would be taking a load off the front end uh, of the bike, maybe straight up and down braking. The front end's a little bit soft. Maybe you're happy with the way the front works overall, but maybe there's one particular corner where the bike, you feel like the front's too loaded. You can use a little bit of rear brake. Also use just a little bit of rear brake to help suck the front end in for direction, help set the direction of the bike. Uh, by using it as well. So that'll give you some good ideas with the rear brake. Now let's give you a way to get, a, get to actually practice doing this. The, there's no difference with using the rear brake, how you go to it and how you release it. It's pretty dang powerful. And on a, and it's it's funny, especially on the on the on the Japanese bikes, you tap the rear brake, it's going to lock up. So it, it your application needs to be a lot softer and more precise than you think. So again, working on your first 5% of your controls. And if you work on the first five, then you can build into it and it'll talk to you of when it's going to lock up. So work on that first 5% of the rear brake. Same thing with the last 5%. It's lighter and longer than you think. You absolutely control brake with the rear brake. Of course you can. Absolutely. Is it more difficult on rights? You bet it's more difficult on rights. Why do they, of course, that's why they have thumb brakes as well. Thumb brakes, super fun uh, and work very, very well. It's also a lot of times uh, on the Japanese bikes that you'll see um, parts available to take the sensitivity out of them as well. Whether it's a cut rotor, whether it's cut pads, um, a spring in the, um, the actual brake lever actuator as well, something to dull down the sensitivity with it. So, Rear brakes always very, very powerful. Some of the Italian bikes, um, even some of the German bikes as well, we're seeing not a sensitive uh, rear brake, but also a great, um, uh, a great way to, uh, a great tool to use. And of course, and it's how you go to it and how you release it is what we're looking for. So practice it. Go find your rear brake. I, even though I may not use it, maybe there's a whole day I don't use it, I still found it before I rode. So I'll still practice how I go to it. I'll practice how I release it every time that I'll ride. I will do it because I don't use tire warmers uh, that often. As I go to the rear brake, I want to find out and see what the grip level is like so I can build into it. If it locks up early, whoa, I know I don't have a lot of grip. If the bike squats down and it doesn't really want, you know, wants to lug the motor down, then I also know that um, uh, grip is pretty good. So give yourself some practice with it. Get a feel for it. And I, I want to go back to the word that I just used, practice it, practice it, right? Build up some practice of feeling it and seeing what it does. You may never use the rear brake. I, I think it's just a great tool for you to be able to have in your toolbox, whether you're a street rider, whether you're a track rider, see how it would complement your riding. I think that's, that's the big ticket right there is thinking about where you would use it and how it would complement what you do on your bike.